Hello everyone, you're watching Campus Channel and we are here today with the Grenoble École de Management. We're going to talk about their Advanced Master in Biotechnology and Pharmaceutical Management. We have the Program Director, Marc Chanel, here to take your questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. Welcome Marc. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate being here. Of course. Well, you have 60 seconds flat. Are you ready? I am all set. Okay, go. Okay. The program is a given inside Paris. It is 100% in English. In addition to that, I would also say the program has a generalist quality to it. That means that you don't have to already have already chosen what you want your subject matter or concentration to go be. Some people know they want to go concentrate in marketing, finance. We give you a lot of courses and a lot of different subjects so that you are well-rounded. In addition to that, the program has a work-study alternating schedule. So that means that you generally spend two weeks inside classes learning and then two weeks inside a company where you are applying those uh, learnings inside a good environment and gaining more management skills. We really tend to look for and focus for pharmacists, engineers, PhDs, people that have a strong technical background. And what I would say is don't just take my word for it. Please talk to alumni that have been inside the program in the past and discover how satisfied they are with the program. All right. That's anything else? Nope. That's it. All right. Let's wrap, wrap up the clock. We're going to move on to the face-to-face. -face. Please remember to keep sending us your questions. They're going to show up right there. So let's take the first one here, and I will let you read this for us, please, Mark. Sure. As the new director, what have you changed in this program? Great question. Um, in some ways, not a whole lot. So I would sit there and say that I've been associated with the program now in teaching for about four or five years. Um, it is the same program that we have always had, the same uh, courses. Uh, the former program director, our CM Mir Islani, is still there as well. So we have kept very much the same program that people have seen in the past that the alumni will be able to go ahead and tell you about. Um, we have gone through a couple of new initiatives, I would say, that we definitely have more contact with our alumni. Uh, we have reached out to them, and they are a much bigger strength inside the program, and I think that's one of our biggest initiatives that we've had so far. How long has this program been around, and how was it developed? Who, what went into developing this program? Well, the program has been around since 2002, mm -hmm. so we did not just recently start. It was not a, a new fly-by-night organization, um, but since about 2009, I think we had a bit of a strategic change when our CMR Islani came in. The program has been 100% uh, in English. Um, since 2009, and we really much take a focus on not just what is happening inside France, but also the world in general. In some ways, I might call this very much an international program because, number one, we have a very high level of English. We have, throughout the history of MS Biotech, had lots of students who were not of French origin. Uh, we've had people from uh, Iran, Germany, the United States, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, uh, you name a country, and we've probably had somebody inside the program. So for us, a lot of different students try and go in and not just look at what is happening inside their own area, but the globe in general. All right, let's take this uh, next question here. Mark, if you'll read this. I failed three years in university while studying pharmacy. It's common to fail years when studying medical. Does it count against access to this master? I guess we have to assume this person eventually passed. <laughs> um, you would assume and hope that they eventually fa uh, passed uh, the program. Um, it really depends on a case-by-case -case basis in mm -hmm. this case. So we, uh, I would say, don't have a rigid formality when dealing with people. Um, grades are important, whether or not you passed, what, what happened inside the past. But we also very much care about what your future is and who you are as an individual. So for us, I might say there's less of a rigid formality that's involved. Everybody is treated as an individual when they come to the program, and we do try and build some very close relationships with people. So if your motivations, as somebody who has a technical background inside pharmacy, even if you failed or didn't do well, it's more about what you see your future as rather than your qualifications to come into the program at this point. So we'll treat that on an individual basis with you and then see how that marries up with what your future aspirations are, which maybe that's more of the business side. So this sounds like someone who did a lot of medical studies or was studying to be a pharmacist. The students who apply now, the students that you accept, are they coming from a medical background? Are they coming from a business management background? Where do they come from? Well, most of our students I would probably call into about three different categories. So we have a fair amount of people that have uh, completed or are in the process of completing their studies to go be pharmacists. We also have another sector that I'll call our engineers. 
And then we also have other people, could be people who have already completed a PhD, but at least a master's level in general to go ahead and enter into the program. And what we are very much specialized in is taking people that have a very solid scientific, could be medical, engineering type of background, and then training them, giving them skills and competencies to apply that technical background towards the business world because it's not easy to go move from somebody who has just a pharmaceutical uh, experience or engineering experience or somebody who even has a PhD to understand how the business world works. So that's kind of our, our main motivation, so to speak. Okay, let's take this question here. What is the recognition of this degree outside France and Europe? Could it get a job in the US in biotech with this master? Excellent question. Um, so the recognition of this degree um, outside France and Europe. I mean, Grenoble Code of Management is triple accredited, uh, triple accredited from three different institutions. Uh, the degree program itself is recognized by the uh, Minister of Labor inside France, but in many ways I would describe this entire uh, program as kind of almost like a mini MBA. Um, and in some ways, the, the qualifications for that, when they see the course study and the workload, somebody who is not French who might be looking at it inside Germany will understand the uh, type of courses you've taken, the type of background that you've taken as well. Um, getting a job in the U.S. in biotech with this master, um, it depends on what your motivations are and what you want to go do. So many of our students are interested in doing um, a voluntary international expatri expatriation program. Um, a VIE, where they might go to the U.S. Um, and work for a period of two years. So last year we had a number of students that decided to go ahead and do that. We have a couple of them inside Boston, North Carolina, and that seems to be a favorite type of destination. But not just the U.S., but I would also say the world for that. Um, we've had people do their uh, after-school programs inside Brazil, uh, 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 Canada, um, a lot of different places. It's very much an international program. So you mentioned that this program is a bit like an MBA. How would, how would a candidate with this advanced master's degree specialized in biotech and pharmaceutical tech uh, management compare with a candidate for a job who has an MBA? Could, oh. could this program help them stand out um, with their specialization in that compared to a person who just has a general MBA degree? In my opinion, yes. So there's a couple things to go understand. Um, I have an MBA myself, so I often put myself in the, the role of the students who would be coming in and then how they would look inside the job market. So it is uh, relatively easy, if you can believe, to go teach people who have a strong uh, background in science about business. It's natural they understand the business type of, of, of concepts once they are sit down and they go, go see it. However, somebody who has an MBA who is looking to go and work for a pharmaceutical company or a biotech company or a medical device company has a lot harder time understanding the science behind it. So it's easy to teach scientific people about business. It's hard to teach business people about science. But the joy of our program is that it kind of combines two. So exiting the program, you should be able to go work at the interface of business and technology. And that means working on cutting edge subjects from a business perspective, but also relying on the types of uh, science and engineering and medical device uh, concepts that you've learned in school. Okay, next question. What tours and visits do you organize to pharmaceutical and biotech companies for us during the academic year? Um, it kind of varies. I mean, I would say that during the actual academic year, we don't take a, a week off or something and go uh, visit different types of companies or different areas that are in there. We try and go take people from industry and bring them to you. So all the professors, whether or not they are a full professor at GEM or somebody uh, that is teaching a course, have or should have prior pharmaceutical experience and are able to go talk about what their experiences were inside the company. Um, Beyond that, I would also say that we do have a one-week trip uh, that we take during the year where we do go visit different companies uh, inside one particular country. So for the last two years, we have visited uh, South Korea, um, where we've made some good contacts and visited some biotech sector, biotech companies working inside South Korea. Uh, two years before that, we focused on Cambridge uh, in England. And then for this year, uh, we are still planning uh, where we are going, but we are targeting a new country inside Southeast Asia. Any ideas where you can, where you, where they might go in Southeast Asia? Um, 
I don't want to. I don't want to commit to anything yet. I mean, we might be looking at Taiwan, but right now is one of the areas that we're looking at, or possibly Singapore as well. So even though you're bringing these experts and these people from industry into the classrooms to meet your students, are there possibilities for students to set up meetings or to visit local uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies in Paris? Well, it varies because of probably about I would say eighty and ninety percent of the classes doing this alternating work study. Uh, uh, type of program. So they are already employed uh, and get to go see and, and live and work uh, with a company that's operating inside the biotech sector. So they tend to keep those uh, people very close to them. You are an employee of this company, so they don't really encourage you or to go out there and start uh, looking around a competitor's company that they might have. You get the experience of being inside the biotech company from being inside that type of experience. Um, the beautiful thing about this is, I mean, you, the types of positions that they take are very much, uh, they could be product managers or project managers, or we have some people that also work inside finance. So they're exposed to new product launches, uh, regulatory affairs, market access, all inside the pharmaceutical sector right now. They're getting to go uh, have courses in it with us and then applying that inside the workplace with their company. So you mentioned this work alternate program, or alter, alternates program. Does everyone do this program in, in, the, in this master's? Is everyone working a job as well as going to school? Um, I would say for this year, maybe about 90% uh, uh, of the people are inside that alternating work study program. There's two options. I mean, that alternating work study program is really, uh, the qualifications of it are a little bit uh, on the technical side, and you can definitely contact the school for more information. Uh, but generally, you need to go be uh, of European nationality um, or have spent a certain amount of period of time inside Europe. But even if you don't do the alternating work study program, you should be doing an internship at the end of the program uh, to meet the requirements of, of the degree. So we have some people that come in who are even of European nationality who say, I don't want to go do an alternating work study contract. I'd rather go do an internship at the end of the program as, uh, instead of doing that. And that works out fine. There is no right uh, strategy to go take. It depends upon what the person's personal needs are and where they see their future and career going. Okay, next question. Does this program have an official alumni organization I could find contacts through? Um, Yes, yes and no, I would say. So the first one is um, we do have students. We have about uh, 10 students from last year's class that have agreed to go ahead and be uh, program ambassadors mm -hmm. uh, for us. And they are ready, willing, and able to go ahead and answer questions about how the program uh, went for them, how they found the experience uh, being. Um, so those were students from last year's class. Um, beyond that, we also are very close with our alumni. We do have a Facebook page with probably more than uh, 250 uh, alumni of the program right now. Um, our alumni are very much uh, integrated inside the program. I would say one thing that's different this year is that potential candidates, um, if we have enough alumni, should actually be doing pre-interviews with the candidates. So that means before you sit down with me to go uh, put your candidature in for to go enter the program, having a call with an alumni member to go get their feedback, the alumni member can ask you questions as well. Uh, the alumni are also sponsoring uh, what we'll call our innovative case projects. So every year the students get to go work on a project that is sponsored by industry. Uh, somebody that's working inside the pharmaceutical sector. This year those projects are coming from our alumni. In addition to that, we also have alumni that have agreed to go be professional thesis tutors. So you don't have to work with just somebody who was a professor for you, but it could be somebody that is working inside the industry as well. So for a professional uh, 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 program or alumni organization, I wouldn't say we've professionalized it yet, but that alumni organization exists. The alumni are very much integrated into the program, uh, and you will meet them uh, as part of the program. Do the alumni recruit from the program for their own companies that they're working in? Oh, uh, they definitely can. We encourage that. Um, that's part of the new things that we've started off is keeping those alumni so close. Because if you look back, I mean, the program has been in existence since 2002. And if you take a look at where some of those alumni are right now, it's very impressive the careers they've had. I was talking with somebody who did the program about five or six years ago. Now they're the chief scientific officer for a company that's going through clinical phase trials. Um, somebody else is currently full-time employed for a major pharmaceutical company, but inside India. 
um, other people are inside the United States. So we're very proud of our alumni. We want to keep them close. Um, and the closer they are with the program, we think the better off it's going to go be for the new batch of students that are coming in as well. All right. Next question. What is the typical background and profile of candidates admitted into this program? Um, so generally, the vast majority of the typical background, I would say, is somebody that has at least a master's degree in a scientific subject. So again, the main types of qualities that come up are pharmacists. Um, engineers are also, I'd say, maybe about 30 or 40 percent of our class. Um, and then we also have, I would say, a lot of different diverse scientific backgrounds. That could be in vitro diagnostics, um, somebody that has studied medical devices, um, people that have already done a PhD. So that's a perfect example as well of somebody that has an excellent scientific background. They could have been working inside for a lab, but they want to go ahead and take that experience as being a PhD and doing research, but direct that more towards the business side, where they want to go be at the, that cutting edge, so to go speak, of business and technology. And do they typically come in with professional experience? Um, a lot of our students do, um, but it really depends upon the level. I think the, the minimum, which not many people do, is just a bachelor with, I want to go say, uh, five years of experience. And I could be wrong in those numbers, but the overwhelming majority come in with a master's degree, having done some internships, had some experience as well uh, before they even enter the program. All right. Well, it's time for our first break. It's time for Three Words Max Taboo. Our guest has three words to describe his program, and he gets one phrase to explain each word, except this is taboo, so we here at Campus Channel have also chosen three words, and if he uses any of those three taboo words, then the buzzer will sound. So, are you ready, Mark? I'm all set. Okay, let's hear your first word. Uh, uh, biotechnology. Okay. And why biotechnology? Um... Uh, just because we've, if we're doing the, the uh, taboo words, it seems like something I would use a whole lot, so it's a little bit easier to go uh, explain or try to go a little bit harder for me to go explain the subject matter without using that particular word. Okay. Um, and a, a second word to describe your program? Uh, management. Okay. Management for me is uh, something to go describe the entire uh, process for what the future is going to go be, where people see themselves inside the program, not just from a scientific background, but in this case, leading and managing an entire bi uh, biotech company. Great. And number three? Um, uh, number three, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, international. No! That was one of the taboo words. Okay. <laughs> so not using the word international. So in this case, I would say multicultural. Okay. Um, for us, multicultural, because uh, we do have a lot of people that come to us from different backgrounds, from different countries. So in that case, if you're looking at how things are trying to go through, it is trying to go understand the world and how everything puts together and be respectful of where people come from and understand that business is not just con uh, conducted according to how things go inside France, the U.S., but there's also a process of understanding and exchanging to go have more of a global view. All right, very good. Let's take the next question here. What's your best advice for, for preparing for the admissions interview? What kinds of questions will you ask? Um, great question. I would say, again, we are not the people that are very much rigid and formal uh, when trying to go do stuff. Uh, for the interview, when you're coming in, we really try and go understand what your motivations are, why you see yourself inside this particular program, and how uh, you go see yourself inside the future and whether or not this program is a good match for you. Meaning we think that you can go ahead and achieve your goals when you come through. So I've heard lots of stories that you know, people feel intimidated during the process. Uh, we don't try and do that. We try and go build a very close relationship with you. So if you're coming in and you feel like a good sense that you're making a connection with the person, um, that's going to be the most important thing as opposed to somebody asking you random questions uh, and trying to go create a pressure situation for you. That's not us. We have uh, a wonderful program where the students are very much integrated and in often cases that just starts uh, with that connection you build during the interview process. So are these interviews typically conducted in person, by Skype? 
Um, whenever possible, I prefer to go do face-to-face -face interviews just because it helps me build a relationship, a rapport with this, uh, the person or the candidate in front of us. One of the biggest questions we ask is, is this somebody that I would like to go work with? Is this somebody that I can see myself uh, uh, enjoying their company with at a company or at school uh, in that type of environment? So there's no magical uh, question so to go speak that's going to go sink your chances of coming in. Be yourself. Be, be the person that you want to go be. Talk to me about what your future is, your dreams, and tell me why you're passionate about them. How much does the interview weigh in the entire application process? What I would call is the interview is getting into the program and the admissions process is kind of like a decathlon. So there's no magical one portion. There's lots of different separate events, and we tend to go look at the combination of everything together. So this is why for us one of the new things we've done this year is trying to go have alumni interview. So if you've put your candidate, your candidature forward to enter the program, you should be getting a call or some side of contact with somebody that's done the program inside the past. There's two reasons for that. The first one is that the candidate should feel more comfortable uh, talking with someone who's done the program. It gives them a little bit of a chance to go ahead and ask questions. But then it also gives the alumni a voice inside the program as well to go say whether or not they think this person would be a good candidate, someone that they would like to go see inside the alumni network as well. So that's another new thing that we added to the admissions process this year that I hope will give people uh, a better opportunity without having the, the rigid formality of a standard interview where somebody might be scared, but a less informal chance to interact with somebody who's been inside the program in the past. Okay, next question. I would like to know more about the curriculum, please. You don't have any classes listed on your site. Um, I'm actually pretty sure that we do. Uh, I could be wrong on that. There's two different versions of this site. Uh, one is inside French, one is inside English. Um, but either way, I will double check about that to make sure that the website is up to date and accurate. Um, beyond that, like I said, we have a very much a generalist approach. So what that means is we don't focus just on one topic or one concept that you're going to go see over and over again and build uh, this incredible amount of, of detail inside one, one particular area. So for us, that generalist approach might start off that there's definitely marketing courses that you're going to go take, uh, basics, basics of marketing, pharmaceutical marketing. We've added a new uh, module for digital marketing. We also take a fair amount of finance courses as well. Uh, finance and understanding kind of what drives the industry. That could be anywhere from capital markets to understanding basic accounting principles because hopefully inside five years students are going to go ahead and be managers responsible for their own budgets. Beyond that we have a lot of different courses that the idea is to make you a generalist, to give you lots of different competencies so that you can work in any sector of a pharmaceutical company. So that might also include something like competitive intelligence, uh, that's another favorite course. Project management uh, is another course or subject that you'd go ahead and be taking. Um, there's really no limit in terms of the different types of areas. Market access is another course that we go ahead and take. Um, there's a good variety that it's not just specialized inside one area. We really try and cover a lot of different areas that you're going to need for the pharmaceutical industry. And so how are those modules organized? Are students taking, say, one particular class an entire semester, or are they only taking that class intensively for a couple of weeks? Or how does that, how is that schedule organized? Um, it varies on the program. So there are some courses that come in that we might have an uh, expert from industry that is going to come in and is going to give that course over a period of a week or two weeks and it might be more intensive looking at one particular course or subject. Other courses we have the advantage that the professor might be local to Paris or Grenoble they can come up it's not that far um, and those courses might be given over a longer period of time so that you're not uh, overdosing on one particular subject matter. But it really tries to come down to we try and offer the best course with the best professor and then trying to go find a rhythm that works with the alternating schedule that we have as well. Okay, next question. I would like some examples of about of real I would like some examples about of real world cases students have worked on for the innovative project in the past, please. Um, so I can talk a little bit about this year. Um, I said many all of our projects this year are being sponsored by the alumni. So we do have some people that are inside the United States. Um, and they are working for a French startup 
where they are trying to take uh, their technology that they've developed inside France and going to go see if it can be adapted towards the U.S. marketplace. So that is uh, at least two projects that we are looking at specifically for different areas inside the U.S., doing complete market study, trying to understand who the players are and whether or not people would be uh, receptive to that type of technology. We also have a, the, the projects really vary, I would say it depends upon who the project sponsor is, but some other people are looking at crowdfunding um, inside the biotech sector. So they're working in companies that make investments inside biotech and they're looking at a particular uh, type of technology to go invest in. So they are doing a complete market analysis, uh, trying to go understand what the needs are for crowdfunding and for basically marrying up investors with technology inside an area. Um, in the past, the, the good thing about these types of projects is that there's a great deal of diversity inside them. So it's clear, it's hard to go say this is the, the classic one, but in general you will always be applying uh, some sort of methodology towards, number one, understanding how different technologies are evolving. And then with that, is there an advantage that one technology has over another? Another one is more of the business side, where you try and go do a market analysis. And that is one where you're looking at what is the total market size that's available to us? How is the market growing? Who are the main competitors that are inside it? What are the distribution channels that are open with that? And then there's usually some sort of strategic question that you're working on as well. So another good example that we have many alumni working in would be the interface of virtual reality and the pharmaceutical sector. So we have several alumni that are working for a company called What, uh, located in Belgium, and they're one of our sponsors this year where they are very much working at the cutting edge uh, for how that virtual reality and biotech work together. So we have students that are doing exactly all those things in this one particular area, trying to understand the market dynamics and the forces and what the future could go be. Sounds like very rich experience that's available. It's time for our next break. Where are we headed? We're not quite sure, but we're going to find out with Final Destination. All right, Mark, so normally we have a student uh, who would draw our sheet of paper for us, but it is your great honor today. Okay. So let's see what you get. The most unusual event organized by my school. Not too bad. All right. Um, unusual ev event organized by the school, I would say, in terms of richness of culture, would probably be the events that go on when we try and go do the study trips abroad. So for me, going through those and going into uh, some place like South Korea, uh, seeing those as a, a learning type of opportunity is not something that you're going to go see every type of day inside an ordinary situation. So understanding the different cultures that are in play, but also in the same time, how all of that comes together to go help and shape the biotech industry as well. Okay. And so speaking of events, uh, Grenoble, the, the main campus, is, is located obviously in, in Grenoble in the mountains. And I know that a lot of the other programs organize ski trips. Do, do the Paris students also have the same access to these organized trips? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, I would say, number one, I mean, the students that we have this, this year in particular, and I would say generally throughout the past, have been an incredibly well-integrated bunch. Um, so inside that case, there's been, in particular this year, this year as well, they did their own integration weekend where they're very close together, they really enjoy each other's company. So they went out for an entire weekend by themselves and they rented a chateau, uh, I think inside Normandy, where they came together and enjoyed each other's company in uh, an attempt to go get better integrated. But in terms of uh, school-sponsored uh, trips to go ahead and go do skiing. Um, I would probably say lean a little bit towards the not really section, mostly because when you find yourself inside two situations. Um, the first one is when you are working for your company. Um, if you're inside that alternating work environment, uh, they expect you to be a full-time employee. They expect you to go ahead and be there uh, learning as a project manager, as a product manager, and having a lot of responsibility. So you're not going to take time during that. But then the other one is when you're coming in and you are taking classes, 
Um, those classes, we expect you to be there. There's a lot of work that can go on with them. Doesn't mean that people don't enjoy each other's company, have fun is doing it as well, but there's a fair amount that you're there to go learn um, and you enjoy your company, not so much by taking a ski trip, but uh, mainly much inside the Paris areas where I would say. Okay, let's get back to the questions here. Next one. Can you tell me a range of jobs I could potentially get after finishing this program? Um, the range of jobs, I would say, really depends upon what your motivation is. So this is where we try and treat people as individuals and not just try and go ahead and put you into a particular category. So over the years, I've had people come to me and say, my dream is to start my own uh, cosmetics company. My job for the future is to go ahead uh, and be a manager inside a research and development facility. My, my dream job is to go ahead and be a product manager. Um, so where we try and go put people or where we try and go help people achieve their goals is the jobs that they see themselves taking inside the future. If you're talking about statistically, I mean, I would say that we do have a fair amount of people that go on to go be product managers, project managers, um, business development, or uh, other areas. Jobs where they are working as financial analysts could also be in there, but there's no typical path for an MS Biotech student. There's no typical country that I would say that most people go to. We have a very rich background, diverse when we come in, and we have a very rich background, diverse uh, culture when we leave. So that's one of our strengths, I would say, overall. Great, let's take this question here. How is the Paris campus? Do students in this program spend a lot of time there? Um, it really varies, I mean, the Paris campus for us, um, we've only been inside the same location now for, I wanna go say, two years. Um, I am not quite sure that we're going to be in the exact same building uh, next year. So I know that there's been some discussions about that, that there might be a change of venue or location. Um, so I, I, I can't really talk about that, what the, the future is going to be, because I haven't quite seen that part of it. What I would say for me is that uh, generally we want to go provide you with an environment where uh, you can stay, you can study, you can go ahead and take your classes where it is not something from the 1960s or 1950s type of French university that you've been in. Um, the rooms, the, the everything has been uh, up to date with technology. Grenoble is known for the technology, management of innovation. That shows in the classrooms. So not just inside Grenoble, where I would say is top notch, but also the Paris campus as well. But generally about Grenoble, um, my opinion is that things always, they always look for a way to go ahead and improve upon what they have. So I hope that even next year's campus, if, or if we're in, moved or inside the same area, it's going to respond to the needs of the students. That's one thing I would actually say today. Um, we have the vice dean uh, who is coming to the Paris campus today to talk to the students, find out what their needs are, um, and address them and find out how we can make those things better. So uh, Grenoble changes, always for the better, um, and I hope it always stays that way. Okay, next question. Where do students come from? Is this mostly a French program? Um, for me, this is an international program, would be the first thing I would say. Statistically, uh, this year I think we have about 85-90% uh, of the students are from France, but that does not mean we don't have students from other countries as well. So this year uh, we have an American, people from Lebanon, uh, Tunisia, uh, people that were working inside Canada. Um, and historically, MS Biotech has always gone somewhere between 10% to 50% uh, have been people who were not French. So French is kind of the dominant side that I would go say, uh, if you're looking at what that program is, but lots of international people as well. And then everybody kind of splits up uh, and goes uh, inside their different ways uh, after the program as well. So within the program, I mean, if you have, predom if you have a dominant French uh, student body, do the French tend to group together for their, wor to, for their work? Does everyone intermix? Um, very much everybody intermixes. So the good thing about the program is, uh, number one, it's 100% English. So if you're dealing and working with somebody who uh, does not speak French, um, that kind of forces you to go ahead and use your English uh, in a professional manner uh, and to go learn how to go work with somebody who might not be from the same country uh, or have the same idea of how to go work together. So no, I would not say that we've had any type of problems of people of one nationality stay together. Um, people come to this program because they want to go ahead and be exposed to people from a different culture. And that could be not only from the cultural side, but the language side as well. 
So I often hear people, even if they're French, speaking inside English. Our English level in general uh, for programs is, is excellent in my opinion. Um, so that kind of goes through in how the class integrates uh, and how everybody views each other. Okay, next question. What kind of entrepreneurial training or education does this program have, considering the e-health programs and startups? Um, a great question. I mean, I'm torn to go answer in a couple of different ways. Um, so for us inside biotech, it kind of depends upon what the definition of biotech, medical devices, and vitro diagnostics is. There are very large companies that operate inside those spaces, but a biotech company could also be somebody that has five, a company that has five employees. So you can find a rich diverseness of where people want to go work at and what their trainings are. Um, what I would say is the classes, like I said, we give you a very generalist approach in the types of courses that you take. So you would be as well suited to go ahead and work inside a small startup with our generalist approach as you would a big multinational uh, corporation working in the biotech sector as well. That's one of the strengths of the program that we have because it doesn't just rely just on marketing or just on finance or just on project management. You could see yourself inside any one of those situations and we have people that have gone to work for smaller entrepreneurial uh, companies inside the past. Beyond that, I would also say if you are truly interested in being an entrepreneur or that's something, Jim does have other entrepreneur programs that are very much uh, structured towards that setting, uh, but we're a bit more of, we have the scientific background, but we'll give you the competencies to go ahead and work in either a uh, smaller entrepreneurial company or a large multinational corporation as well. Have you had students who have launched their own startups who are themselves entrepreneurs? Um, I don't think I would say so much that they were the, the CEO or they launched it, but I do, we do have people that they have been employee number seven um, inside the door. Um, I think I have one student right now who graduated five years ago when they are employee number five. Um, so the good thing, like I said about us, it's not just that you are inside one area or one type of company. We've had people in small companies, people inside large companies, and what I honestly feel is that we give you the tools to succeed in both. And part of it is, is that, to be honest with you, um, students when they come in, they don't know yet what they want. So they might like small companies, they might like large, they're not quite sure. That also goes through with the courses. They might like something like market access, they might like something like competitive intelligence, but they don't know about those courses or what's available for them. So part of what I try and do or what the program tries to go do is give you a lot of different options and you would be sub very surprised, I always am, how many people come into the program, take a new course that they've never even heard of before, and that turns into a passion or an industry sector where they want to start to go work in. And that's a good thing for us. All right, let's take this next question. Do you have relationships or partnerships with pharmaceutical companies in Switzerland? Um, I would say if you look out throughout our uh, 200, 230, 250 alumni uh, that are just on site our, our Facebook page. We probably have uh, a graduate of the program working inside uh, all major mar uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies inside the world. Um, you can probably find somebody that fits inside that particular area. We do have some companies uh, that we are closer with than others, but I can definitely tell you that we have companies where students have gone to go work inside Switzerland inside the past, where we have a, a lot of different people, um, definitely uh, inside uh, France as well, the U.S. Um, so we have a lot of different ones, but I wouldn't say that there is one magic Swiss company uh, that's out there that attracts more people than others. It depends upon uh, the needs of the students and where they see themselves being at. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for questions, unfortunately. But we're going to finish with something nice. It's time for The Sweetest. <laughs> so, Mark, what was your favorite question from the entire interview and why? Um, I think the, fa the favorite question for me was, it was about being, uh, does the program go for uh, looking for somebody who's looking to go understand uh, an entrepreneurial degree or a background and whether or not that's appropriate. Um, because that does kind of, for me, force me to go take a look at um, and talk about the big picture for what is uh, the MS Biotech at Grenoble Colonial Management, which is that it, because it is a generalist program, it very much allows you to go through and do what is right for you. 
as opposed to sitting there and picking one particular program that says that you want to fit inside this type of box. Um, it's just a great question. All right, very good. Well, thank you very much for being here and sharing more about your program. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time right here on Campus Channel.